This is your July 2023 training video. We're going to cover drags and carries. So we've got uh, Engine One on B Shift helping us with our drags and carries this month. Uh, we got Mitchell McMahon. He's going to be our our victim, our patient. Ryan Nelson is going to be our rescuer. And you'll see that that Mitchell is not in his turnout gear, and that's for for a reason. Oftentimes when we train train drags and carries. Uh, and we're simulating victims, we still wear our turnout gear. And we do that, uh, one, for, for safety, or maybe we're in the burn building or some other place where we don't want to be rolling around on the ground. Um, but certainly out in the bay, uh, I think this is some good, valuable training to do when you don't have your turnout gear on. Because think about it, with our turnout gear, there's a lot of places we can grab onto, right? We can, uh, I see folks a lot of times will grab here, and it's really easy uh, to manipulate the body, but you know, you're not gonna have a victim that's wearing turnout gear bed at night or, or in their home when it's on fire. Um, so this is a, a good training point that, that we want to um, we want to use and so uh, part of it is you know how we manipulate the victim's limbs and how we how we uh, move and carry them. So uh, the first one first one we're going to do is a uh, high heat low visibility drag that's in the IDLH and um, as we we're talking about Mitchell doesn't have turnout gear on and so when we go to, to grab that victim, we don't want to grab like this, right? We don't want to just grab single limbs because our gloves could be wet, the patient could be wet, the patient could be burned, and we pick them, go pick up a limb and the skin comes off. Um, what we want to do is scoop. So you see, Ryan is grabbed right behind the, the heel and under the knee. Those are natural areas where you can get your gloves in. He's going to cross over. Now he's scooping again and he's putting himself in a position where he's gonna be able to utilize large muscle groups. And when we do our drags and carries, we wanna think about not just using our arms, we wanna rely on our larger muscle groups. So he's got Mitchell's legs captured with friction under his shoulder or uh, under his armpit, and he's gonna be pushing off with this leg and his back, and he's gonna be looking over his shoulder. All right, so this one uh, we call the, the wrist lock or the wrist drag. Uh, it's not necessarily um, maybe a go-to, but it's good for high heat, low visibility, um, ideal age where you don't have a lot of uh, uh, distance to work in this way. Maybe you can't get a rescuer on the other side of the, uh, of the victim. Maybe you just need to move them quickly for a short distance, whatever the case may be. Um, but you get uh, right in line with the victim. You're gonna grab their wrist. And he's gonna put one, one hand below and then he's going to take uh, take his thumb and push Mitchell's wrist down, which will give him a little bit of a little bit more grip, right? So he's going to get right in line with Mitchell, um, an arm's length away from him, and pull him to it. And just a note for the victim: uh, when you're practicing this, lock your shoulder out, just because it, it'll be painful. We don't want to get any injuries in training. And you can pull them to an area where you've got more room to manipulate them for a different drag or a carry, or pull them out to where you have additional firefighters who, who can help you move the thing. So our final one is uh, an arm drag, uh, and uh, we do raise the victim up into the IDLH a little bit, but we're just kind of doing some math on that, that maybe we're uh, a lone rescuer for the moment, uh, and we need to move them a little bit farther Whatever the case may be, it's another tool in the toolbox. And so, uh, what Nelson's going to do is that he's going to capture that arm and use that scapula right there to kind of pull the victim up. And he's going to get uh, the victim's uh, armpit right as close as he can to to uh, right into his his elbow. He's also going to grab his flashlight right here to help him with that friction, right? And so he he sets the victim down pushes off on that back leg. And can move the victim pretty easily uh, over a farther distance than just the, the arm, the wrist lock. So we'd encourage everybody, try this training drill, try this uh, with the, the victim, simulated victim, just in civilian clothes or just in their PT gear, not in fire gear. Uh, if you want Safety One to come out and help facilitate this, go over some of these drags and carries at your station. We'd be happy to just give us a call. Thanks for your time.